Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 55 for February 22nd, 2021. I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller, and today I want to talk to you about perseverance, but not just in a general sense. I really want to talk about the idea of being willing to commit to something and following through with it, even when it gets difficult. And I particularly want to discuss this in the realm of business. I say over and over again in these different episodes of Valor Media, business doesn't have to mean a job. It does specifically in the context that I'm sharing here, but it can apply in so many different areas of life. It doesn't always have to boil down to performing a service, manufacturing goods of some kind and receiving money in exchange. It can be about that, about a creator, a producer, and whoever consumes that creation, be they a client or a customer, a listener, a viewer. Sometimes that's the way it plays out. But really in the course of our daily lives, we engage in many different kinds of business. There are many different things that we face as we navigate through life that require us to figure out specific steps things that we need to do in a precise sequential order to get from A to Z. And sometimes when we're faced with whatever frustrations or setbacks, it's easy to lose perspective and get off course. And I've talked about this before because it's something that I'm very passionate about. Life is hard. Life is challenging. And even things that we care passionately about, things that we really feel motivated to do, can become drudgery if we're not careful. They can get overwhelming. And we may get out of bed in the morning and have this overwhelming desire to rush off to work, or maybe we don't. Sometimes we don't have a choice, and sometimes in the middle of the commitment and the obligation, we really lose focus on trying to go beyond whatever the constraints of that daily existence are. So today, what I want to share with you is kind of basic but I hope it's inspirational to you in the context of moving you beyond the nuts and bolts of what you are repetitively doing over and over again. And maybe this will apply specifically in the context of a job or a career or a vocation, and I hope it's beneficial to you from that standpoint. But again, you might find application for it in some other aspect of your life where you have to take a systematic approach to getting something done. Ultimately, it comes down to getting something done, but doing a lot more than just that. If we get in the rut of just getting things done, all we ever do is get things done. We never grow and mature and move into other areas and try new things. And if we don't do that, if we don't step outside of the comfortable box that we found ourselves in, then ultimately what we'll end up doing is just staying in that very tightly defined area. We never really begin to tap into our full potential until things get complicated and difficult. If it stays easy, so will we. And if we really want to mature in what we're doing, and we really want to discover what it is that God put in us, sometimes something unique to us, an assignment and a purpose that nobody else could quite carry out in the same way, we're only going to rub elbows with that when we step outside of that safe, comfortable lane that we sometimes find ourselves locked into. As we came into 2021, I did an episode of Valor Media in which I talked about that whole idea of overcoming ruts, because sometimes ruts can be debilitating. Sometimes ruts get generated because we become very adept at doing things well, and that's kind of a difficult thing to spot because we see the success of what we're doing. We see good fruits to our labors. And if we're not careful, we'll start convincing ourselves that, wow, we've arrived. That's it. That's what I was shooting for. That can be okay. But see, I always want to be shooting for the next thing. I always want to be setting the bar a little bit higher. To me, I'm not competing with anybody else. I'm competing with me. And the things that I'm specifically pursuing I a lot of times find to be moving targets. There are many things that I really feel God wants me to accomplish with my life, and I have to discipline myself to pursue them because I'm extremely busy and I have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of obligations, and my day-to-day life is full of days that are pretty full. 
I have very little free time and it's difficult for me sometimes to carve out that quality time that I really need to be able to set aside for those larger things that I'm pursuing that go outside of the scope of daily obligation and responsibility. And I've discovered that if I'm not really committed to doing that, then I'll go through cycles where maybe weeks and in some terrible cases, even months slide by where I'm not actively pursuing those bigger things. And again, in the meantime, I'm still doing whatever it is that I need to do. I'm still giving my time and attention to the requirements of my work position. I'm still meeting family obligations. I'm still running errands. I'm still doing all the things that I could check off on a checklist and say, yeah, I'm, I'm getting things done. But at the end of the day, without focus and discipline and really maintaining that trajectory that moves me toward the things I know God wants me to reach out for, then those things, because they require specific extra effort, will gradually start slipping. Sometimes it may be just a day or two that I don't get to take at least some steps in those directions. But if I'm not careful, days become weeks and weeks become months. And when that momentum gets broken, it's really difficult because with some of the things that I pursue, some of them that involve some technical aspects, if I don't do them regularly, if I'm not engaged in them at least every other day, I find that I'm always facing a learning curve when I come back. And because technology keeps changing, that can be overwhelming as well. Because it's not simply a matter of picking up where I left off, but it's recognizing that there may be something new I have to contend with that has unfolded since I last was allocating time toward whatever it is that I'm pursuing. The whole idea of persevering, of reaching toward a goal, particularly doing so while you're inundated with the responsibilities and the pressures of daily life, is exemplified really well in a fantastic book that I can't recommend enough. It was written by Homer H. Hickam Jr., and it's called Rocket Boys. Now, you may be more familiar with the movie adaptation of it called October Sky. I actually saw the movie several years before I read the book, and I still love the movie, but as is often the case with movies, they took some liberties with the story, and I much prefer the book because it's a really honest autobiographical retelling by Homer Hickam of what it was like to grow up in Colwood, West Virginia in the 1950s. Now, like hundreds of towns throughout Appalachia in the 50s, Colwood was a really impoverished place, and it was very much a company town. It was centered entirely around a coal mine, Colwood Mine, and that was basically where most of the men in the town worked. Homer's father was the superintendent of the mine, and that was what the entire community was centered around. There was a company store. There was even a church that was kind of under the direction of the company. So everyone who lived in Colwood had that mine as the center of their existence. And for young men in Colwood at that time, the options for doing anything different with your life were slim to none. Most fathers, including Homer's dad, expected that their sons would follow in their footsteps and go into the mine themselves. The only other possibility for getting out of Colwood involved football. There was a thriving local high school football community and a lot of enthusiasm behind that. And if you really excelled at football, there was always that slight possibility that a college scout might find you and you may wind up with a scholarship that would enable you to go off and get a degree and learn skills that could take you elsewhere in the world. But by and large, beyond those things, you were stuck in Colwood. Now, Homer had several really close friends, and they were all brilliant boys. They loved science. And in the late 1950s, when the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik 1 satellite, it really caught the attention of Homer and his friends. It was the beginning of the space race, and as the United States was scrambling to catch up with what the Soviet Union was doing, Homer and his friends became really enamored with the whole idea of rocketry, 
a hero of Homer Hickam's was the German rocket scientist Werner von Braun. And Homer followed very closely all of the developmental work that von Braun and his colleagues did as the U.S. moved forward with the space race. Well, Homer and his friends began to explore the possibilities of building their own rockets. And what's really funny with this is, in the 1970s, my brother got extremely interested in model rocketry. And he used to fly model rockets, he built model rockets, he built some of them from scratch, but he was using commercially available engines. And in many instances, he was building from kits with parts that were available in hobby shops. But Homer and his friends in the late 50s in Colwood didn't have any of that. And so as they pursued rocketry, they had to figure it all out themselves. They had to not only design the rocket, they had to design the nose cone and figure out how to specifically, precisely manufacture it. They had to ensure that the fins were not only designed correctly, but were perfectly aligned so that when the rocket took off, they would have control over its intended trajectory. They also had to develop propulsion systems for the rockets. And as you read the book or even watch the movie, it's absolutely mind-blowing to see these high school students in the late 1950s in this impoverished town doing this amazing stuff. Now, one of the things that did work to their advantage was because Homer's father was the superintendent of the mine, Homer had friendships with some of the guys who worked in the mine, and some of them were machinists. So he was actually able to enlist their aid, and they were able to, in certain instances, fabricate parts that he and his friends needed for the rockets that they were putting together. I don't want to reveal the story to you. It's definitely worth reading or at least watching the film. But it's astonishing to see how Homer and his friends had to be so intentional about pursuing what, to the people around them, probably seemed like a crazy dream. But they did. And it was very tempting to get pulled into the pressure that their fathers were enforcing on them because, again, the expectation would be, come work in the mine. There were no guarantees with what Homer and his friends were pursuing. It took a lot of diligence. And as you see throughout the course of the story, they faced unbelievable obstacles and setbacks. Some of them were incredibly heartbreaking. And while all of that was happening, they still had to contend with the fact that there were dramas playing out in the town itself and in the dynamic of their own family relationships. Because of Homer's dad being the superintendent of the mine, there were issues that occurred with mine strikes and unions and so many different things. All of these could have easily distracted and maybe completely disillusioned Homer. But even when there were setbacks, even when it looked like his dreams would never come to pass, he still persevered. His friends followed his example, and they worked together to accomplish amazing things. Well, probably what's most amazing about the story of Homer and his friends is that all of them wound up going to college. That was practically unheard of at that time in Colwood. But they all went on to obtain college educations. And Homer and several of his friends became engineers. In later years, Homer actually became a NASA engineer, and he worked at the Marshall Space Flight Center, which, fascinatingly enough, was the old stomping grounds of his hero, Werner von Braun, who he never had an opportunity to meet, but he was nevertheless always influenced by. So you can look at it on that level and say, well, that was really inspirational that they overcame all of these obstacles, and he finally got his dream. He actually got to work in rocket science, working with NASA. And that's true. But I think one of the most amazing aspects is, before he really got into that NASA career, he also made the decision to enlist in the armed forces and serve in Vietnam because he felt a very strong patriotic duty. It was something that was really instilled in him by his parents as he grew up. Even at the moment when he could have said, okay, I've finally accomplished all of these things and I can step into what I always wanted to do, he put it on the back burner again because he felt a deeper commitment to serving his country. He finally did, after getting out of the service, 
come fully back into that realm of the rocket science, and he became very well established at NASA. What I find particularly inspiring about that when we look at whatever we're doing in our own businesses, our own vocations, the organizations that we work for, is that we have the ability to get caught in that mindset of, well, I'll just go work in the mines. That's what dad did. And certainly there were times that Homer probably felt the temptation to do that. We do that in our businesses. And sometimes I think we kind of put blinders on where we say, this is a lane that we have a certain degree of comfort with. We've developed a little bit of a track record. And rather than risk upsetting the apple cart, let's just keep it a status quo. And we'll just keep doing what we always did. We won't try to embrace something new because it might be just a little too risky. Let's just stay in Colwood. But if we step out and we recognize that even while we're doing whatever it is that's associated with that current pursuit, if we really go beyond all those constraints and we determine that even if we can only work on it in dribs and drabs, we're going to move towards something else, then we open up an entirely new field we would have never seen. And I encourage you, whether you own a business, whether you just work for someone else, or you're involved with any group or team of people that have come together to accomplish a common goal, find ways as you move throughout 2021 to look for something a little higher and a little farther down the road. And again, it may be something that you have to overcome a thousand obstacles to get to, but if you purpose that it's a worthwhile pursuit, you don't have to stay in Colwood. You can literally reach for the stars. At Valor XL, we want to help you to do that. We've gained a knowledge base over the years that we want to be able to share with other agencies, organizations, and businesses so that you can develop strategies for smart work. You know, sometimes we automatically assume that the work we do is smart, and we may be highly intelligent people doing complex things, but if we're approaching whatever goals we're facing in a way that just fundamentally doesn't make sense, we're wasting our time and our valuable resources. We have people who work in our organizations that we want to be able to utilize to the fullest of their potential, not only to our benefit, but to theirs as well. And it really comes down to understanding what smart work is all about. If you'd like to get some deeper insight into how you can rethink the approach you're taking in your organization or business, please reach out to us at info at valorxl.com. And someone from our staff will get back in touch with you to start taking a look at what we can do to reshape the approach you're taking as you move through whatever your pursuit is, reaching for whatever stars you're reaching for. Now, we also encourage you to visit us on Facebook at Valor XL. And please check out the overall mission and vision of Valor Ministries on Facebook at Valor Ministries. And you can visit our two separate websites, www.valorxl.com and www.thevalorcenter.org. If you have questions or comments about anything we've discussed in this or any of the previous episodes of Valor Media, please reach out to us at media at thevalorcenter.org. You can also contact us if you have ideas for topics that you'd like us to discuss, either in our Valor XL series or in our Crisis to Thriving series, where we share strategies for how you can live more abundantly. Speaking of abundant living, I'd like to recommend a book that Lori Riston just recently published. It's entitled, You Were Made to Thrive, Seven Strategies to Move You from Crisis to Thriving. It's available on Amazon.com and at www.valorxl.com slash products. If the Valor Media Podcast is something that gives you inspiration and insight on how to move forward from wherever you find yourself today, would you help us to move forward by financially assisting us? If so, you can make your tax-deductible donation securely online by going to www.thevalorcenter.org slash donate, or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. 
Thank you so much for joining me today, and I invite you to please come back next week for another installment of Valor Media. Until then, remember this, you were made to thrive.